One Year Later has returned with yet another installment into the series. This is the show where we take a look at players from the 2021 NHL Entry Draft, and we discuss where they have gone since that day. Last time, we talked about the first overall pick in Owen Power, but he is not the only player that has a very interesting story from then until now. This pick is not a guy that was taken in the same range as Owen Power, in fact, it was taken a lot later. But, the fact that he is a Toronto Maple Leafs prospect makes him one of the more interesting players in this draft, especially when you consider the entire discussion that was going around about this guy as to whether or not he would actually play for the Maple Leafs in this year's playoff run. So, let's take our sights over to the second round and talk about a guy that was the very first Toronto Maple Leafs pick of the night. It is 57th overall pick, Matthew Nyes. Now, when I say he was the first pick the Maple Leafs had in the 2021 draft, I don't want you to take that lightly. In fact, he was one of only three players the Leafs had in this entire class of players. They had Matthew Nyes at 57, they had Ty Voigt at 153, and Vyacheslav Peksa at 185. This was really not a good draft for Toronto when it came to the quantity of picks, but that was because they traded away a lot of their picks in order to make the playoff roster they had, which inevitably lost in the first round to Tampa Bay. Matthew Nyes, though, played his draft plus one season in a way that really compensated for the Maple Leafs' lack of draft capital in the 2021 draft, as his overall season was just extraordinary compared to what people thought he would be able to do. This is because Matthew Nyes, as a 19-year-old, 6'3", 205, as a left-handed center left winger, was a guy drafted out of the USHL where, playing for the Tri-City Storm, he had 42 points in 45 games played. Now, that's a pretty okay number, he was playing on a junior team in the top junior league in the USA, but it wasn't really seen as the best season considering the fact that the year before he had the same amount of points in the same amount of games, roughly. In fact, his point-per-game number actually went down from the year before. If you want a scouting report from around that time frame, this is what Dabra Prospects has on January 2021, written by Claire McManus. Nyes is an offensively skilled forward with crafty hands, but he tends to get overly creative and cause turnovers with the puck. This could be an issue at the next level. If he learns to make simpler moves, he could improve his draft stock, as he would be less likely to turn the puck over. He has strong vision and passing abilities, getting the puck to dangerous areas on the ice. Nice also has a very accurate shot that can beat a lot of goaltenders. He displays decent skating skills with average first step acceleration, but he does have the ability to win foot races the pucks from time to time. Defensively, he needs a little more work, he maintains good positioning and has an active stick, but he could get more involved physically. And so, when the Maple Leafs drafted this guy in the 2021 NHL Draft, I saw some people going out there and saying, hey, why did we take this dude? There are some other players that were still on the board that could be seen as a little bit more valuable, and guys that had better draft profiles in that time frame. It wasn't seen as the worst pick in the world, I mean, come on, the guy's 57th overall. But still, there was somewhat of a concern as to the direction the Maple Leafs would be taking with this draft pick. However, after Matthew Nyes made his debut with the Minnesota Golden Gophers in the NCAA, things took a turn for the better. The extraordinarily side of better. But it didn't start there. He actually played at the World Junior Summer Showcase, getting seven points over the five-game sample, he played his usual power game, according to the August 2021 report, making life difficult for the opposition down low and along the boards, but he also showed off a bit more high-end skill over the course of the event as well. He was able to generate off the rush and showed improvement in his release, scoring a couple goals off of heavy shots from distance. Nyes may have entered the event as a dark horse to make USA's World Junior team, but his performance at the World Junior Summer Showcase put him squarely in the mix to earn a key role for the annual holiday tournament. The World Junior Summer Showcase was just a preview, because as Nyes made his way over to the NCAA, he got off to a very good start, especially for a freshman player. He had 7 goals and 9 assists for a total of 16 points through 18 games, and he was, at one point, the second highest scoring player amongst all freshmen in the league. We'll talk about that number as it goes on towards the end of the year, but this was around December. Nice did indeed make the World Juniors, where he scored a goal in the only game he played. We all know the World Juniors was shut down this season, and they will continue in August, but for Nice, he was out there on a stage where he had all eyes on him, and he showed up. 
In fact, it wasn't even the only time he represented Team USA, as he was selected for the Olympic squad as well. In four games played, he had a goal and an assist, which is great seeing as he was an 18, 19 year old guy playing at the tournament. But capping off his NCAA freshman year, Nyes finished the season with 33 points in 33 total games played, 15 goals, 18 assists for the Golden Gophers. Now, he wasn't the top scoring freshman in the league. There were a few guys that had more points than him, Josh Doan for Arizona State. It's kind of funny how Josh Doan, Arizona Coyotes prospect, is playing for Arizona State, but that's besides the point. Luke Hughes for the Michigan Wolverines, you have a few other names thrown in there. But when it comes to freshman points per game, Matthew Nyes was fourth in the entire NCAA, behind Sean Farrell, Coronado, and Doan. Here's what the Dauber Report says on his season in 2021-2022. Nice has been on a steady upward trajectory ever since being selected in the second round of the 2021 draft. He quickly established himself as a key player on one of the best teams in college hockey, helping lead them to a berth in the Frozen Four with a combination of clutch scoring and imposing physical play. He earned a spot not only on the U.S. World Junior Team, but on their Olympic team as well, and was named to the Big Ten's All-Rookie Team, as well as the conference's second All-Star Team. Short of a national title, it was a dream season for the Arizona native, and he will take another crack at it with Minnesota in 2022-2023. As of now, it would be a surprise if Nyes isn't on the Leafs roster at this time next season. Speaking about Nyes and the Maple Leafs roster, everybody was talking all about this guy and the dangles he was going out there and performing, how he could just use his body and size to get around people, and the tight mitts and the shot. There were so many highlights of this guy popping up on Twitter every few weekends because, of course, Playing in the NCAA, you only play games on the weekend, it's kind of the pattern over there. But Matthew Nyes quickly became established as one of the more underrated prospects in the draft, especially as a guy who was taken in the second round. At the very least, he had a season that you could say was first round caliber, and the Maple Leafs got this done with a 57th overall pick. The hype got so great to the point that when his season finished up, a lot of Leafs fans were saying, hey, we could use this guy on our team right now. He is a dynamo player in the NCAA college scene. So let's try to sign him. Unfortunately, though, for all the Maple Leafs fans looking to see Nye suit up against Tampa Bay, he informed the team that he would stay in the NCAA and work on a few more things before coming over to the Maple Leafs and going pro. From everything we had seen from NHL insiders, it appears that they really did want this guy to sign. They really did believe that he could help the team out immediately. But he said himself, sorry, I just want to stick around in college for a little bit longer. That's his prerogative, so it's definitely not something that I blame him for, but it is interesting to kind of think about what the Leafs could have been had they had Nyes on their roster, and had he actually been as successful as a lot of Leafs fans would have wanted him to be. Just because you're fantastic in the NCAA doesn't guarantee NHL success, but the recent trend of guys like Zegras and Boldy and Caulfield, players in the NCAA that do very well as freshman players jumping over to the NHL and doing well over there too, makes us kind of believe that Nyes might have been capable of similar things, but of course, it's all just hypothetical at this point, isn't it? Although I do start to wonder if Matthew Nyes does spend another year in the NCAA and he becomes even better than what he was this year. What is the type of monster the Maple Leafs are going to be getting out of this guy? In fact, if he goes out there into the collegiate system and he plays with the Golden Gophers once more and he's able to capitalize on who's going to be there next year, you gotta remember second overall projected pick Logan Cooley is going to be a Golden Gopher next season, it really gets me wondering as to what Nyes has as a ceiling for next season as well. And, let's say he gets extraordinarily better, he becomes a lot more confident, maybe Logan Cooley teaches him a thing or two about evasiveness and slipperiness out there on the ice. If he becomes even better, and he signs with the Maple Leafs, then, all of a sudden, that's an extra year saved for the Maple Leafs when it comes to this guy's inevitable RFA contract extension, which he's going to have three years after his contract is signed. Now, if he does sign at the end of the 2022-2023 season, and he ends the 2023 year on the Maple Leafs, he would be burning off the first year of that contract, but still, the same thing could have been said had he signed this season and played for Toronto against Tampa. So, talk to me in the comments all your thoughts about Matthew Nyes and his entire progression from one year ago to today. He was a second round caliber guy that was taken by the Maple Leafs, who just so happens to be playing so well in the NCAA that you could argue he should have been a first round talent with hindsight included. It makes things all the more special for a Maple Leafs draft class that really didn't have too many picks, but 
who, with the very limited picks they had, ended up taking some pretty good players. Talk in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this British Rajah Trolls 99. And bye. <laughs>